Welcome, amazing friends. And let's solve the second bridge interview question together. I tell you, it's just very, very simple, okay? Now, looking at this equation, we call this kind of equation a quartic equation because the highest power of x here is 4. So, what does that mean? It simply means that we are expected to have four values of x yes four values of x now let me show you how to solve this kind of equation so we're going to begin this with solution remember there are a lot of methods you can use but i want to show you a trick on how to answer this okay so what you can easily do is we can rewrite this remember this is x to the power of four so just remember this rule of your exponent which says when you have this it means a raised to power multiply this it becomes mn okay so when i have this it can still be written as this did you see that so that when you multiply this it gives you x to the power of four so what it means is that for this i can represent it like this because of what i have here okay so we're going to now have we are going to have x squared raised to the power of two did you see that then plus x to the power of 2, okay, is equal to 20. Now, what do you do again? You observe that this and this are the same. So I can just simply use another variable to represent it. So in that case, we can say let x to the power of 2 be equal to y, okay? So what it means here is that for this, we are going to have y squared okay the whole of this is y then raise it to the power of two then plus this is y okay then this is positive 20. we want to take it to the left side of the equation so in that case it's going to become negative because you subtract 20 from both sides i hope you are with me there so we're going to have this and everything is equal to zero now what do you do here you are going to solve this. It has led you to a quadratic equation. So we are going to now solve this. There are a lot of methods you can use to solve this, but I'm going to teach you how to factor. We are going to factor because we can factor this, okay? If we can't, we should. We can also use the quadratic formula. Now, ask yourself question. What two numbers can we get such that when you multiply, knowing fully well that the coefficient of y squared is one, so we don't have problem. So what two numbers can we get? And you get it from the factors or those numbers that can divide 20 without tremendous. When you get them, when you multiply those two numbers, it will give you negative 20, okay? Then when you add those two numbers with the signs, remember the coefficient of y here is positive one, is going to give you positive one. Now, what are those two numbers? You can pause the video for a while and think, Think, okay, what do you think are the two values? Remember, you get them from the factors of 20. And the factors of 20 are, we have 1, 2, we have 4, 5, we have 10, and 20. So choose two numbers from here. That way you multiply, it gives you this. And when you add it, it gives you 1. So which one are we going for? Now, to cut it short for you, we are going to choose these two, okay? So we are going to have 4 and 5. Now, what signs are we going to take? What we have here is negative, and what we have here is positive. So we're going to have the positive sign will be on the bigger number, okay? Then the negative sign will be on the smaller number. When you multiply this, it gives you negative 20. And when you add this up, negative four plus five is going to give us a one. Did you see that? So having done that, we are going to now have, so this is going to give us, we are going to have, this is giving us y squared, okay? Now, because this is y squared, let me show you another trick you can use. This is y squared, so you are free to open up two brackets for y, okay? Now, put one y here and another here. I hope you are with me. Now, these two values you got, we are going to put them into the bracket. I hope you are seeing what we're doing and everything will be equal to zero. If you expand this, it is going to give you back this. Now, what does this mean? It means that either y minus four is equal to zero or y plus five is equal to zero. Now for this, add four to both sides. If you do that, this will cancel. Y will give us, add this, it gives you four, okay? Now, this, we have gotten the value of y here. 
For this, subtract 4 from both sides because it's positive. Then if you do that, y is going to give us a negative 5. This is another value of y. But remember, the question is not on y. Our question is on x. So what do you do now? We are going to now have it that, remember we said, let x squared be equal to y. Did you see that? So we are going to have it for when y is equal to 4. What do you do? You are going to have x squared is equal to our y becomes 4. Now, this is where the trick comes in. Okay? Don't just say 2, 4 is 2 raised to the power of 2 and x squared. Then you now say the bases are the same, the, pa the powers are the same, the base will be 2. No. Remember, we said we are going to have four solutions here. Okay? So we have to play smart so that we gather all the four solutions. If you do it this way and then say that x is 2, you are reducing your values of x. I hope you got that. So what do you do at this point? What we're going to do here is, having got to this point, this is a quadratic. It's a quadratic equation because you still see that this is x squared. So what you do here is, we are going to have it that x is going to be the square root. And remember, if you are taking to remove a square, you square root, okay? So you are square rooting both this and this side of the equation. And you do it with the positive and negative sign. Always note that, okay? You do it here also. But this square will take off the square root and these signs. Did you see that? And in that case, you are going to have x is equal to plus or minus. Square root of 4 is what two numbers can you multiply to give you 4? That number is 2. I hope you've seen it. We have been able to get the value of x to be plus or minus 2. Okay? Now, let's go to this. So, we have it that at this point, when y is equal to negative 5, repeat the same process, okay? So we're going to have, so let's, we have x squared is equal to negative 5. Did you see that? So the same thing, take the square root of both sides. So we have it both the positive and negative, okay? So we have x squared is equal to square root of negative 5 plus or minus. Now what do you do? This square, we cancel the square root with the sign, okay? So we're going to have x is equal to... Now, when you look at this, you observe that the value inside the root is having a negative sign, and this is a square root. So each time you have a square root and the value inside it is a negative sign, what it means is that that value has no, is no longer a, a, real, a, a real solution because it cannot be found on a number line. Okay, so you can't find this on a number line. So what it means is that this is leading us to what we call an imaginary number. I hope that is clear. So in this case, we are going to have it that, remember, just remember that since it's leading us to imaginary number, we have it that x is equal to plus or minus square root of, this is negative 1. You can write it as negative 1 multiplied by 5. I hope you are seeing what we are doing. So if you simplify for that, so we have x is equal to, now this is giving us, just remember this, remember this, that if you have root a, b, it is same thing as root a multiplied by root b, okay? So we can split this to now b. We are having x is equal to plus or minus square root of negative 1 multiplied by square root of 5. Now remember that when you have square root of negative 1, it is, is equal to what? i. This is your imaginary unit okay so in that case we are going to have x is equal to plus or minus did you see that this will be replaced with i so we're going to have i and this root 5 is a prime sword it cannot be reduced okay so this is the lowest form so we're going to return it i hope you have seen it so in conclusion we are going to have it that so this is another value of x so in conclusion, you've seen that we have two values of x here, the positive and negative 2. So in conclusion, our x is 2. Did you see that? Negative 2. Then here we have positive i root 5 and also negative i root 5. I hope you see that. So these are the four values of x. These two are the ones we call the real solution, okay? These two are real and these two are the imaginary numbers.
they cannot be found on a number line. And I hope you really learned a lot. Let's know how much in the comment. Don't forget to give this tutorial a thumbs up. Subscribe for the more tips you'll get and ensure to share so that more people will learn the skills we just displayed. I will see you in our next class to talk more. Bye-bye.